As you probably already know, after successfully clearing the launch pad, Starship left quite a mess behind. The pad got some substantial damage, and there has been no shortage of discussion going on about this incident, especially about how long it will take to repair it and make the necessary upgrades. Musk is hell-bent on 7 to 8 weeks, NASA and SpaceX are optimistic for a second launch attempt to happen this summer, but you know, regardless of more or less optimistic dates for Starship's next flight, it is my goal for this video to bring your attention to the fact that the pad at Starbase, Texas was not the first ever to be damaged like this. In fact, many other launch pads have been hit much harder and they eventually were brought back to life. So join me as we take a look at other rockets that also went a bit too hard on their launch pads and how long it took to repair them. The first one on my list is the Vanguard TV-3. Launched in 1957 from Launch Complex 18 at Cape Canaveral, it was the first attempt by the US to send a satellite into orbit around the Earth after the Russian successes with Sputnik 1 and 2. And well, I said launched because the flight had a total duration of 2 seconds. It literally managed to lift about 4 feet or 1.2 meters of the pad before losing thrust and falling back down on its butt. The press had a blast calling this one Kaputnik. This event caused its fuel tanks to rupture and explode, destroying the rocket and damaging the pad's foundation and some support structures, such as umbilical connections and fueling systems. Still, the Vanguard was a small rocket, about 22 meters or 72 feet high, 3.9 feet in diameter, 25 pounds or 11.3 kilograms to low Earth orbit, not much. And so the damage does not appear to have been too severe after all, since the next Vanguard launch, TV-3BU, BU for backup, occurred from the same launch pad merely two months later. I am sure Elon would be delighted to hear that. Next we have the Atlas Centaur with its AC-5 launch attempt from Launch Complex 36A in 1965. Similar to the Vanguard, this one suffered engine failure after lifting a few feet off the ground and fell right back down. But unlike the Vanguard, the Atlas Centaur was carrying more than 20,000 kilograms or around 46,000 pounds of propellant, which caused one of the biggest explosions ever seen at Cape Canaveral. As you can imagine, the launch pad received quite a bit of damage, although again, it ended up not being as severe as it looked. The launcher was completely destroyed, along with most of its uh, hydraulic systems, and many other structures and systems were also destroyed or partially damaged, but despite this the repairs were mostly completed in three months. How about that? Now NASA also released an ex-confidential document about this failed launch where pictures of the aftermath are also to be seen and I found some of these images to be quite reminiscent of the ones we have recently seen of the launch pad at Starbase. Next we have the Soviet N1 serial number 5L launched in 1969, this one made a huge blast. It was intended to send the L1 sun spacecraft around the moon and take photographs of possible landing sites for the astronauts in future missions. The launch took place from launch pad 110 east at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. However, it didn't last long. As soon as it cleared the tower, there was a flash of light and immediately after that, all engines shut down except for engine 18 and this single engine was able to lean the rocket over at a 45 degree angle which dropped back onto the pad while still carrying nearly 2300 tons of propellant on board. This resulted in one of the biggest non-nuclear explosions ever, which was able to send debris flying as far as 10 kilometers or 6 miles. But the most impressive thing is that subsequent investigations revealed that around 85% of the propellant actually did not detonate during the explosion, but rained down from the sky afterward. Launch crews were permitted outside half an hour after the accident, and they encountered droplets of unburned fuel still raining down. And well, as a consequence of this event, launch pad 110 East was more or less destroyed, and so this time around it didn't take two or three months to repair the pad, but rather 18. Uh, that's one and a half years. Next, we have the more recent failure of the Antares Orb 3 in 2014, which was planned to carry the Cygnus cargo spacecraft to the ISS. It had a planned mission duration of one month, but in the end it lasted only 23 seconds. 15 seconds after liftoff, the rocket's first stage had a propulsion failure and began falling back down toward the pad. 
The range safety officer managed to activate the flight termination system just before impact, which ended in a spectacular explosion that was felt 32 kilometers or 20 miles away in Maryland, specifically in Pocomoke City, the friendliest town on the eastern shore. Good to know. The explosion also ravaged uh, launch complex 0A on Wallops Island. Repairs and upgrades to the pad were completed in about 1.5 years. There is also a spectacular video of this explosion on YouTube by Matthew Travis. I will leave a link to it down in the description box. Even more recently, we had the SpaceX Falcon 9 that exploded during a static fire test ahead of its Amos 6 mission, causing serious damage to the Space Launch Complex 40 and destroying the satellite payload. Now, this one is interesting because the payload belonged to the company Spacecom Satellite Communications and their contract with SpaceX specified that in case of losing the payload prior to the launch, Spacecom could choose to receive 50 million US dollars or a future flight at no cost. And while Spacecom chose the future flight to launch its uh, AMOS-17 communications satellite, which successfully took place in August 2019, also aboard of a Falcon 9. So, back to the explosion. Launchpad repairs began in early 2017, and by December of that same year, SLC-40 returned to service with the launch of another Falcon 9, carrying the commercial resupply service mission number 13 to the ISS. So as you can see, sometimes if the damage is not too substantial, a launch pad can be repaired fairly quickly. Not so fast if huge explosions that destroy critical infrastructure are involved. In the case of Star Race, it was just a hole in the ground plus some projectile damage to adjacent structures. However, SpaceX does not only intend to repair the damage, but also make upgrades such as adding the water cooled steel plate under the launch mount plus the water deluge system and doing some modifications to the orbital tank farm. Elon is confident this will happen in two months, but I think uh, most of us are a bit more pessimistic. Apart from the repairs and upgrades, there is the FAA investigation, which no one knows how long it's going to take. It could be several weeks or several months. Mm, now there is also the lawsuit against the FAA, so I believe it is very unlikely we'll see a Starship flying again in less than two months, maybe later this summer and uh, likely before the end of the year. It might be a bummer if we have to wait until the end of the year or later for the next launch, but we've also managed to survive even longer periods of Starship inaction. And luckily in the not so distant future, we will also be getting Starship launches from the Cape. So worry not, the Starship era has just begun. But anyway, let me know your own predictions in the comment section. So that's a wrap, I hope you liked this brief overview of other rockets and launch pads that didn't fare as well as Starship or Starbase did. Have a nice day in whatever patch of land on this planet you are, and uh, see you soon. Bye bye.